previously on MasterChef. The pressure test went into overtime with a battle royale in Las Vegas. This isn't just any Vegas restaurant. It's mine. To determine which of these four home cooks would be eliminated. It's still moving. Is that raw? She's burning buns again. Sorry, Chef. When Natasha and Beth beat the odds... Blue team won. Luca and Kathy went head-to-head. -head. The stakes don't get any higher than this. To decide who would be cashing in their chips. For one of you, your MasterChef journey ends here. Tonight, the winning home cook from Vegas returns to the MasterChef kitchen. Please, welcome back. And it's a mystery box from another world. I have no idea what any of these ingredients are. This may be the most difficult mystery box in the history of MasterChef. The guest judge in the elimination test is an American food icon. Oh my God. Who also happens to be Mama. Joe's mother. Put that down. Tonight, one more home cook. Thank you for nothing. Sees their dream come to an end. into the MasterChef kitchen today. I'm so relieved to be here. I did not leave my family and my son at home to just go home with nothing. I want to be in the culinary world, and I'm fighting for it. Welcome back from Vegas, everyone. Luca and Kathy went head to head in an epic battle on the Vegas Strip. And it was close, very close. But we had to send somebody home. So in a moment, either Luca or Kathy will walk through those doors. Kathy and I instantly, we were like best buddies, and it's gonna be really hard if she leaves. Please, welcome back. Welcome back, and great to see you. It's nice to be back at home. It's a huge emotional blow for me. I'm definitely alone now. I don't have not one person that I can really talk to. I don't like these people, and they don't like me. It's time for your next Mystery Box Challenge. As with every Mystery Box Challenge, the contestants have to prepare, cook, and present one incredible dish using all or some of the ingredients inside the box. Now, the person who wins this mystery box will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge, after which at least one of you will be going home. On the count of three, lift your box. I'm from Texas, you know, I do a lot of barbecuing, and I'm hoping that it's a piece of meat that I could season up good, sear it, you know, make it real juicy. When I lift up that box, I hope that it's not something that's completely out of my comfort zone. I'm just a rustic Italian cook from South Philly. Like, I want to make pasta. One, two, three, lift. Woo! Which language is that? Is this Russian? Oh, what the? F oh, come on. What is that? What did you give us? You guys all look a bit puzzled. And that's the idea. This is a bounty of ethnic ingredients from Russia, Spain, China, all around the globe. Usually, we tell you exactly what you have under your mystery box. Today, however, you'll have to work it out for yourselves. The secret of a great chef is the ability to discover and conquer any available ingredient anywhere in the world and have the skill to make it taste delicious. So take these exotic foreign ingredients and make us one delicious dish in 60 minutes. Your time starts now. things go over here my strategy is to open everything try everything i think i'm going to use a lot of the elements here because i want to show off that i'm not scared of these unknown ingredients oh man they're so bad <gasps> oh yeah, nope not happening sir first one elk 
kind of like venison, northern European. Um, Very lean. That's a godsend. Yeah. Some type of steak or something. I'm just trying to get an idea of what it is right now. You're going to pick your protein. I would also take a close look at this uh, mojama, which is Spanish salt cured tuna. Here we have Okinawa sweet potato. So mm -hmm. obviously from Japan. It's a nice purple color inside. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a yam. It's super very, starchy. Very starchy. These oh. are the cod's liver. Very popular in Russian patties. Look at that. Man, that is gross. That is the most disgusting <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. Ugh. Do you smell that? Is this ground moss? Yeah, Chinese ground moss, yeah. Mm. So it needs to be reconstituted, rehydrated, and it comes out like a texture of a noodle. Right? Wow. What is this? This is Chinese pubic hair. It's like a Halloween costume put in a bag. Put it on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> that's hair. That's that's a legitimate bag of hair. Well, you'd have to be really hungry to eat this. <laughs> what would you make, Graham? I see a piece of protein right there. I'm going right after that. I'm doing elk, like pan-seared, mm -hmm. sliced thin, cube up, roast off some of the uh, Okinawan sweet potato. Seems like the obvious easy route, though, right? Absolutely. But I think if I can perfect that, I'm home free. 25 minutes gone. You've got 35 minutes to go. I've been on such a big stage playing in the NFL. I don't get nervous. When I'm cooking, I'm actually, like, pumped and in my own zone. How you doing, boss? That's some good-looking meat on the grill. Do you know what it is? I have no idea, but I know it's gamey because it don't have a lot of fat in it. So okay. Did you I taste it? To, I pounded it out to try to make it thin. That's a good idea. That's smart. Yeah, and I got a puree. I know it tastes kind of like sweet potato, so I put a little cinnamon in there, a little cream. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Jordan. Hey, Chef. What are you making? I'm going to do kind of a stacked salad, because all these flavors, there's some great bitter notes, there's some great sweet notes. I'm going to mix in uh, baby eels, I'm assuming. So you're quite comfortable? Yeah, I'm feeling all right. You've got 20 minutes to go. All right, thank, thanks, Chef. Jimmy, what are you making? I'm trying to do maybe like a surf and turf type thing. What is that? That, it's, it's some type of steak. It tastes delicious. I cooked it real quick. What's in the pan? What do you got going on? This is like some type of um, clams. Mm -hmm. This is like little baby eels or something. Okay. And I'm just see if I can make like a salad with this, and I'm hoping that the flavors come together. Good luck. Right, Lynn. So what have you gone for? I'm gonna do kind of a taro root puree, a little sweet to a little bit of acidity for uh, my tartar. Tartar. Yes. So uh, how are you going to spice that tartar up? A little bit of lemon zest, some herbs, to kind of liven zest. it up, make sure it's bright. I think lemon zest is the best way to go. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. So based on everything we've seen, who's your money on? Jordan. He's in his comfort zone. Totally on phase. Can identify 95% of all those ingredients. Then he's been able to identify most mm -hmm. of the resources and use that knowledge to construct yeah. a plate that I think will put him on top. I'm going straight for Eddie. Everybody mm -hmm. knows the meat. He's got it cooked. I think that that's going to be a yummy dish. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Hands in the air. Throughout the Mystery Box Challenge, the judges taste elements of all the home cook's dishes as they come together. They now take one last look to choose the top three standouts, and the winner of this challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. I look at my dish, and it looks awesome. It's probably the best looking dish I've played it so far. This is me on a plate, and this is what I do. Great job. There were three stunning, outstanding dishes that were beautifully conceptualized. The first dish we want to bring forward, all the components were well seasoned, beautifully put together, and just the overall balance, absolutely spot on. That dish belongs to... Eddie. Let's go. Finally, like, I'm in the top three. I've been working hard, you know, and putting out good dishes. It's paid off, and, you know, I'm happy. Wow. That's a scapegoat. That's easy to do. Everybody can cook a piece of meat. First of all, what do you think your dish is? I'm not sure about the, uh, the meat. I know it's very gamey. Well, let me tell you first what's on the plate, shall I? Please do. The puree is a purple Japanese sweet potato. And the protein? 
elk flank. Okay. Now, how did you cook the elk? Just a quick sear on that flat net, mm -hmm. looking for medium. And the greens? I fried them in a little olive oil, lemon zest, salt and pepper. That's delicious. The balance is correct. The sear on the elk, stunning. The puree is just smooth, delicate, and really well put together. Good job. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. The smartest thing in that was that lemon. Exactly. I mean, to cut through, there's cinnamon, there's some acidity, so it's not just heavy puree. Exactly. It, it lightens it up. The greens are delicious. Great strategic choices, and pulled it off. Thank Good you job. very much. Thank you. This dish may um, look simple, but it's actually very complex. Good job. Thank you very much. The second dish that we would like to examine further, it was extremely creative and beautifully presented. Step forward. Jordan. All right. Beautiful. Thank so you. you tell me what the dish is. Uh, it's a cold salad with like a black vermicelli base of noodles with sea grapes in it for the saltiness. And then there's, I'm guessing, maybe like a tuna jerky, some greens of sort, maybe a bok choy cousin or something. How about on top here? Uh, crisped up some uh, worms of sort. So they're baby eels. Oh, so all right. What do you think this was, the bottom? Some sort of black vermicelli noodles. Actually a Chinese black moss. Tastes great, really smart, being able to utilize these things and put it together. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Chef. It's smart. You've got the balance right, the mm -hmm. seasoning. And then these chips, you know, to put that into a, a crisp and get it that tasty with that saltiness, he brought that in. Welcome to the top three. Great Thanks, job. Chef. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Good job. Really good job. The third and final dish that we want to taste. Please step forward. Bimi. Lynn, whilst you visually put things beautifully on the plate, you need to season them. It's a beautiful plating. From a guy like you to get that kind of finesse, really impressive. Tell me about the dish. I was tasting everything, and I was trying to see what could work together. So when I seen steak, I seen the seafood, I started tasting that. And I could have ate that just by itself, because, you know, in Puerto Rico, we get the, the cans like that. We just eat them just like that. You know, surf and turf, courageous, beautiful plating. You were able to kind of hit on all the notes. Sweet, salty, tangy. It's like an orchestra playing a symphony all at the same time. This is a tour de force. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Delicious. Seasoned beautifully. The balance is incredible. And especially with that note of the acidity at the end, it's got that sort of gastric finish, which is tough to pull off. I don't think this is a fluke. I think you've nailed it. Thank you. Gentlemen, three stunning dishes. There can only be one winner. The person that cooked the best dish tonight will gain a huge advantage, unlike any other advantage we've given out in the history of this competition. Congratulations. Steady Eddie, well done. Thanks. Yes. Now I get a chance to pick and choose the next move in the competition. Eddie, you ready? Yes, sir. Let's go. Well done. Go. Incredible. It's delicious. Eddie is 
now in control of the elimination test, where at least one person will leave the competition. Welcome, Eddie, to the Marcia Pantry. But the one thing he can't control is the theme of the challenge. As always, that is in the hands of the judges. Today's elimination challenge focuses on a type of food that's very near and dear to my heart. Pasta with a filling. The first pasta you have to choose from comes from the region of northwestern Italy, Piedmont. Agnolotti. There's a lot that could go wrong with this pasta. You have to be extremely careful to get the amount of filling and thickness of the pasta just right. And this, I promise you, is very, very difficult. Your next choice is a pasta that's actually a favorite of mine. It has a really memorable shape and an abundance of filling. Mezzaluna. Mezzaluna. The trick is getting that filling just right. It needs to be properly seasoned and perfectly cooked. Your final choice is a very special pasta, something that's served at festivals and very special occasions. It's known across Italy as the bonbon because of the shape and the texture. Caramelli pasta. Look at them. They're filled with mozzarella and served in a delicious tomato sauce. Wow, look at that. Seeing as you won the mystery box challenge, your first advantage is that you will not have to cook in today's elimination Whew. challenge. <laughs> so, Eddie, which stuffed pasta will everybody out there have to make? I want to go with the most difficult dish. Smart. Smart. So, I choose. Because Eddie won this mystery box challenge, he is safe from elimination. The theme of today's elimination challenge is stuffed or filled pasta. In the pantry, we gave Eddie three different kinds of stuffed pasta to choose from. Eddie chose... Agnolotti. To help you out, we're gonna give you a demonstration on how to make the perfect Agnolotti. But rather than me show you, I've invited somebody else to show you how it's done. Someone who can still teach me a thing or two about pasta. In fact, it's someone who taught me everything I already know about pasta. Oh, my God. Please, turn around and welcome... Oh, my God! To help you out, we're gonna give you a demonstration on how to make the perfect agnolotti. Please, turn around and welcome best-selling cookbook author and restaurateur, Mama. Oh, my God! <laughs> it's Lydia Bastianich, like, my culinary idol. Like, I worship her. I've been wanting to learn how to make Andy for years now, and to be taught by her, that's gonna be awesome. You look amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have three sons here today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're so excited okay. to have you. Everybody, this is Lydia Bastianich, one of the world's foremost experts on Italian food. Please. Thank you. Put these on. All right. Take a look. Ah, very nice. Ah. There's just one more very tiny twist. Eddie, you now have a third advantage. You will now get to decide which two of your fellow competitors will not get to witness Lydia's demonstration. No way. I'll kill you where you stand, Eddie. I immediately started thinking strategy, you know, try to think of everybody's weaknesses and their strengths. And I know that it has to be someone that is great competition and someone that I know will definitely struggle if they don't witness this. First person. I don't think they have a lot of pasta experience, but they are an extremely good cook. So, first person I would have to pick would be James. James. Wow. He's 
son of a bitch, Eddie. He views me as a serious threat, and he should. I'm not mad at him. He's playing the game, and he's playing the game smart. Wow. For my second choice, being around this person, I noticed that they ask a lot of questions, and they learn a lot of things by asking a lot of questions. So I'm going to have to say Lynn. Lynn. Oh. Yes. I am so screwed at this point. I've never made any Lodi, so if I don't get to learn now, it's not going to happen. James and Lynn, please, both of you, leave the kitchen and wait until this demonstration is over. As for the rest of you, make your way down. How excited are you? I'm, like, shaking. All right, guys. So, where do we begin? We're going to make just simple egg pasta. This is about a pound of flour. You make a well here. There's four whole eggs and five egg yolks. Put it in here, a little bit at a time. So the ratio of liquid is very important. You want the pasta to be smooth and buttery and soft. You continue the kneading. So we do it by hand because that's the best way to do it. So from here, we let it rest, 20 minutes. Oh, my kill, Eddie. One chance to, like, actually see that yeah. in your life and then it's taken from you. If I survive this, he is target number one from here on out. So we start with the hand cranker on the lowest setting. You want to get it to this kind of consistency. It should be translucent. It has the right feel. The uh, agnolotti feeling is a, a very simple feeling of leftovers. Beef, salami, roasted chicken, veal, any kind of meat you have leftovers. You're making the filling, the texture is important. You can do a hand meat grinder. So you don't want to put it in the food process because you don't want it to be pate or pasty. You begin one way, then you go the other way. So back and forth. And then right into the boiling water. Always put a lid on the pasta because it gets your boiling point right back up. We're making a grana sauce. We put it in here. You get a little bit of butter. Ready? Can you grate a little cheese here? Well, put that down. No, I'm going to put the sauce. Just enough sauce all around. And then, alas, some grano padano. Agnolotti, a traditional, simple dish, but is not so easy to execute. OK, James, Lynn, please, back to your stations. Thank you. You have 60 minutes to make us some delicious agnolotti that will make my mother proud. Your 60 minutes starts now. Me and Lynn are both in that same boat as we're going to make angelotti, and we have no idea what it looks like traditionally. I want to put myself in this dish. I didn't grow up in Italy. Like, I grew up in San Diego, where we eat enchiladas and California burritos. I want to use what she taught us at the demo. I don't want to copy it, so I'm thinking of the ingredients that I use at home, bell peppers and jalapenos, and I want to put my own twist on the pasta dish that Joe's mom showed us how to make today. Let's go, guys. What's the biggest mistake we can make at the beginning of this challenge? Well, beginning with the pasta is not working it enough. And then the rolling part. The rolling part is very touchy. If it's very fine, then it breaks. Yeah. If it's too thick, then it gets too chewy. The success of this dish is a balance between the texture of the pasta, mm -hmm. the amount of the fillings, and yeah. then the amount of the sauce on top. I loved watching the demo. So I'm just going to try to imitate that, but incorporate different meats. I'm going to do some oxtail and some braised short rib. They're both really rich, so it should make a great filling. All right, Johnny, what's the plan? What do you got? I'm going to try and make a uh, smoked maple syrup Alfredo sauce. A what? Putting maple syrup in Italian food is, like, sacrilegious. You use a lot of maple syrup in Italian cuisine? Uh, it, it doesn't actually, exist in Italian cuisine. In New England, it's actually very popular. Maple Alfredo is very popular where I'm from. All right, good luck. Thank you. Lynn, what's the filling? The fillings are charred, leek, and short rib. 90% of the fillings inside are andalotti are grind. When you blend and blitz, it goes pasty, sort of like baby food, and you destroy the textures. Look down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meat grinders, one blender, pure, and that's you. Are you going home tonight? 
All the flavors I know, I can win this competition. But if I screw this up, I could be going home. And my heart is sinking to the floor, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh. <laughs> Lynn, are you going home tonight? No, I'm not. Because you seem upside down right now. It looks like Lynn is struggling pretty bad. To be able to knock him out right now would be a big advantage for me. So uh, I'm pretty happy right now with my decision. Howard. Joe, how you doing? You make a lot of pasta? I do not make a lot of pasta at all, actually. And, uh, uh, San Diego's not really known for their Italian foods. So what's the filling? Shredded braised chicken, um, bell peppers, and uh, a little bit of seasoning. What do you think about putting bell peppers in the stuffing? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's only unusual. unusual, yeah. I would um, taste that, pay attention, you know, we talk a lot about textures and all of that. I will do so. What are you doing with the asparagus? Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Wow. All right, good luck, Howard. Thank you. Right, James, what are you cooking? I'm doing a ricotta, parmesan, angelotti that I am tossing in a ala vodka sauce. The tomato ala vodka sauce was miles away from Piedmont. Lydia didn't go anywhere near that. You think this tomato vodka sauce is going to blow her away? I think it's going to be unexpected, and I think given the fact that I didn't watch any type of instruction, it's going to be delicious and taste great. Good luck. Thank you. Chrissy, I bought Hi. you my mother. You're a hero. Hi. Hi, Chrissy. How you doing? I would shake your hand, but I have flowers. It's okay. If Jesus came down and stood next to Lydia, I'd be like, yo, what's up, dude? Lydia, how are you? Where are these animals? Oh, they're right here. There's a Swiss wow. chard and pancetta. It's good. It tastes very good. It really does. Thank you. There's just under five minutes to go. Your pasta should be hitting the water very soon if it's not in already. Chrissy's looking very competent. James is looking very composed. Howard's looking very shaky. And Lynn is looking out of his depth. I think that Eddie might have dealt Lynn an ace that will take him out of the competition. The water's not boiling. Why hasn't Beth got a lid on top of her pasta to bring the water up to boil? If she's not boiling water at this point, she's dead. She's not boiling. Beth, Beth you, gotta you have to put the lid on. All the pasta should be in the middle of a furious boil right now and ready to come out. Boil. Beth, you got to put it in or she's not going to have anything in the plate. 90 seconds to go. I realize that that pasta can't cook in the time I have left. So I just throw three annulati in the pan, get some butter going, a little pasta water, because you know it'll continue cooking. Let's go, guys. Heat the sauce. Keep everything hot. Come on, Beth. Let's go. Eight, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands Woo. up. Right. Eddie, make your way down from the balcony. We're now going to taste each and every one of your dishes. And on the back of that, at least one of you will be leaving tonight. Lydia, who should we taste first, please? James. James, let's go, please. Thank you. There's no way around it. That sucked, not being able to see that demonstration. What's in here? I did a annulati alla vodka. I had no idea what to do with the annulati. If you were not here, notwithstanding that, the shape is fair. The ratio of stuffing to the pasta is good. The taste is, is good. I know you're at a disadvantage, James, but flavor is good. Thank you. I think it's a good dish. I like the flavor of the sauce. The filling is really yummy. This tastes like you've made it a lot. Good job. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to be the top one or top two in this, but I'm not going home. Who would you like up next? Lynn. I look at my dish, and I think this could be it. This could be your ticket home. Right. I mean, first of all, 
you were up against it. A, you didn't see the demo, and B, you're using a blender to puree the mix. I saw that pureed cat food in that mixer, and it was like, first thing I looked at was Eddie on the balcony thinking, smart move, because you were at your depth. What's in there? It's a short rib and ricotta filling, and the sauce is a charred leek brown butter with a little bit of the uh, braise. Under seasoned again, and you've got a sort of awkward thickness to this pasta. You didn't see the demonstration, but it's laid out, one sheet, brought up and nipped together. You folded it and lifted it up because I've got a double layer of pasta, which makes it so inconsistent. I think Eddie played to his strengths in this one. He did. <laughs> So you consider yourself a front runner in this competition? Not after this, no. You know, sometimes an advantage puts someone in a trouble spot, but it's very rarely someone can use an advantage for such an accurate and precise strike at a very vulnerable target as Eddie did with you today. Chef. He hit you in the bullseye. Eddie could have picked any of the 14 people and I don't think it could have been as effective as picking me. I could be going home. The judges are continuing to taste the dishes prepared by the home cooks in the stuffed pasta elimination test. Very rarely someone can use an advantage for such an accurate and precise strike. Eddie hit you in the bullseye. <laughs> Lydia, whose dish would you like to taste next? Johnny. I know they're gonna give me a hard time for using maple syrup in Italian food, but I think they're gonna like it. It's a butternut squash and ricotta agnolotti with a smoked maple alfredo sauce. So the butternut squash has its sweetness with ricotta, and then the sauce is with the maple. And alfredo, it's a bechamel with, it, with uh, Grand Padano cheese. Maple syrup is not Italian at all. We don't have it in Italy, we don't make it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna taste and see how they work together. In my mind, they don't work together. It's, it's more of a dessert, you know? Maybe if you put some cinnamon on top of it and some granulated sugar, you can take it for dessert. As pasta, it just doesn't work. There's no harmony there. Jesse! I'm so sick of Jesse. Southern Belle, do no wrong, little Miss Manners. I'm not impressed by her cooking. So the filling, what's inside there? Oxtail and short rib with just a little bit of the chicken filling. <sighs> Here's the thing. I mean, the pasta's beautiful. Uh, the filling is seasoned stunningly. And I think there's a target on your back because everyone thinks you're in this competition because you look good. Um, you're in this competition right now because you cook good. Never forget that. And again, that has proved it. Great job. Thank you so much. Good job. Let's go to Chrissy. I made a Swiss chard and pancetta stuffed agnolotti. The sauce here that you made? Uh, just simple, just simple butter sauce, and I put a little veal reduction over it. I want to keep it simple because I went a little non-traditional with the filling. Good. Thank you. The, the ratio of filling to the dough is, is good. You get a nice mouthful of dough and just enough filling to kind of support it. And the simple sauce goes well with it. I've been watching you long enough. I should have. Uh, have you? <laughs> yeah. All right, good, good. Well, continued success. Thank you. This is like the ultimate validation for me. Lydia, whose dish would you like to taste next, please? Beth. Please. Beth, let's go. Thank you. I'm dreading having to present my dish because there are two scenarios, worst case and worser case. It's ricotta and herbs and watercress and goat cheese. I like the idea of the herb filling and then, of course, the actual pasta being undercooked. That was sad to watch. I would hate to see you go home on this. I would hate to go home because I can't boil water. Right, but I mean, it, it could happen. I know. I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if it did. Oh. Howard? All right. Walking up, I'm not 100% confident in the dish that I'm bringing up. 
The plating isn't that great, but hopefully the flavors come together. So what is exactly this stuff? Uh, bell pepper, jalapeno, braised chicken, and then it's spiced with uh, a little cumin. Yeah, cumin is a spice that is not used a lot in pasta making or stuffing. Yeah, what I got here is a mouthful of peppers. Okay. It's not harmonious with a pasta dish like this. Classics work and they're appreciated time after time. Otherwise, they wouldn't be called classics. Of course. Get a good connection to the basics. Don't just fly off on a wing, okay? I, I, I don't understand. She's been nice to you, but the whole thing with you is you have this very cavalier attitude. You don't know what you're cooking, what dish you're making with 10 minutes left. Then you come up here, and get misty-eyed with us, like, oh, poor me again, I got screwed up, and I'm getting tired of it. Because if you were smart, you would duplicate a plate. The fact that you're not even thinking of playing this game properly is really annoying. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna taste this. You want 15 of the same dishes up here? If you're here putting your spin on everything you make because you wanna show us how cutesy and intelligent and crafty you are, well, that's going to get you a one-way ticket back to wherever you came from. And then you could show your friends and the six people who told you were good how cute and smart you are when you're home cooking at dinner parties while the rest of this group goes on and competes to become the next master chef. So I want pasta cooked properly because you know what? The only thing worse than a cook who can't boil is a narcissist in full denial. Thank you for nothing. Ah, Joe's just... This is a competition about flair, about finesse, about creativity, not about copying someone else's so you can win a quarter million dollars. If you're here putting your spin on everything you make because you want to show us how cutesy and intelligent and crafty you are, well, that's going to get you a one-way ticket back to wherever you came from. Because you know what? That's the only thing worse than a cook who can't boil is a narcissist in full denial. Thank you for nothing. Tonight, there are two standout annulotti dishes that really impressed Lydia. The first dish, we actually expected perfection from that person, and they delivered. It had a perfect ratio of filling to dough, worked beautifully, seasoned perfectly. This person is becoming a front runner. Congratulations. Chrissy. Well done. Thank you. Aside from the birth of my child, this may be the happiest day of my life. <laughs> but the best dish of the night had incredibly delicious filling. The balance of textures worked perfectly. It was almost as good as her dish. And that dish belongs to Jesse. Chrissy and Jesse, you are now team captains in the up and coming challenge. I've been team captain twice. I've never been defeated as a team captain. This is awesome. What a great advantage. I'm a force to be reckoned with. So now the bad news. Usually, we only bring three people down. Today, there are four people that really disappointed me and my fellow judges. Please come down. Johnny. Lynn. Howard. And Beth. Johnny and Beth, please step forward. Two dreadful dishes, underwhelming, badly thought out, and on the verge of an insult. On any other night in this competition, you both could be going home. But luckily for both of you, two other people were even worse. Both of you, back on your stations. If Howard stays and I go home, then I must have really screwed up my dish to make that happen. I'm, like, nervous and my hands are sweating. I love cooking. This is my passion. I'm just praying that I'm not going to be the one that goes home. Lynn, your dish 
was a total mess. The balance was incorrect, the texture was all wrong, the pasta was badly utilized. Quite frankly, your worst dish so far in this competition. Howard, you've got this ignorance that you wouldn't absorb the kind of magic this lady has spent nearly six decades creating. One of you has reached the end of the road. I would like that individual to leave this competition in a dignified manner by removing his apron, placing on his station, and leaving the Master Jeff kitchen. That individual knows who he is. Do the honorable thing. Lynn's one of the top guys here. He's a better cook than I am, and he shows it with, with his plates. I got here, and I got an apron, and I got to compete. Yeah! Woo! Thousands and thousands of people did it. I did as best as I could. The actual cupcake is definitely the hero, a bit like you tonight. Good job. Thank you. And I feel amazing about it. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. My dreams about being in the culinary world are even more alive than they were before I got here. I'm leaving a better cook for sure.